So let's start with just the most basic hem, which is a turned hem that is straight stitched. There are a couple of options. You have to decide right from the get-go whether you like the raw edge of a knit, because of course knits don't ravel, or if you prefer the more finished edge, and if you like that, then you want to serge this edge first on the bottom of your hem before you do anything else. But it's important to have even hems that lie flat, because most hems are on the cross grain, so that means they're going to stretch quite a bit when you stitch them on the cross grain. So you want to get them nailed down, glued down, if you, if you want to call it that, and, so that you can stitch them and they'll stay really flat. I do that by using little tag board templates. I either cut a piece of tag board, which you can buy at an art supply store, or you can use something as simple as a manila file folder. But you want to cut, using a rotary cutter, a piece of tag board that is exactly the finished width of your hem. So in this case, I've used a piece of tag board and cut it one inch wide because I want one inch finished hems. So you will place the template on the wrong side of the fabric, some distance from the edge, and you're going to be rolling this hem up and over the template so that the raw edge meets the top of the template. You probably want to get some steam going. Some knits press really easily, and some knits don't. So what I'm trying to create here is what I call a memory crease that comes in handy later. So here's this little crease. Now we want to get the hem fused in place. And there are about three products that I use that work. And one of them is a fusible web tape. What this is, is a paper covered line of glue, basically. So you will cut this or tear it off the length of whatever hem distance you have. And make sure that the paper is on the top and the gluey side is on the bottom. All right, so with some steam, you're fusing this to the very raw edge of the hem. I'll give it just a couple of seconds to set and then remove the paper and you can see the glue. There's a little fuzzy quality and white quality to the very edge right through here. So that's your glue. I use this particular product from Japan because it's very, very sheer and lightweight. Some of the other products that you find are heavier and stiff, but this doesn't change the character of the hem at all. So I've turned the hem up on that memory crease, and now I have a perfectly even one inch hem. And it's glued down, it's not going any place. So that's one product that I like to use. Another product is something called temporary spray adhesive. And because it's a spray, then obviously there's overspray, and you don't want to get this product on your table, or your, even your hands, because it glues nicely to fabric, but it never comes off of your table. In fact, they actually make a product now that will take it off the table. But this is a little aerosol can, temporary spray adhesive. So I'm going to spray this right along the edge, just one light, easy spray. And hopefully you can see that as well. It just has a little fuzzy character to it. So I press that down. This doesn't necessarily require heat and your iron. This will press with your fingers. So that hem is in place as well. The third way to do this is to actually use a product called a fusible knit hem tape. And this is a tape that comes on a roll, comes in various widths, but I actually like to use this narrow half inch wide one. And again, there's two sides to it. There's a side that's rough, that has the glue on it, and another side that is smooth. 
So you want to cut it again to the length of your hem. And you want to place this so that it is on the wrong side of the hem with the glue side up. Because ultimately, we're going to fuse it down and you want that glue to be able to work. Before we sew, I want to show you what this particular technique looks like. On the wrong side, you will actually see two rows of stitching. One of the rows of, stitch of stitching is because you have attached the knit stay tape to the hem first. But on the right side, you only see one row of stitching. So I'm going to sew this to the wrong side of the hem with the fusible side up. And I want to place it so that the knit stay tape is just slightly inside that raw edge. As you sew, you don't want to pull anything. It's all just as flat as you can make it. Sew just a little bit. Sometimes it helps if you have a flat table or an extension to your sewing machine so that you can get this flattened a little bit farther in front of you here. But you'll get the idea. And I'm about a quarter of an inch from the end, or from the edge. All right. So this is what it looks like after it's sewn. It might look a little roughly, but it'll press out just fine when you actually turn the hem and fuse it. So the hem gets folded and then pressed in place. It's all very flat. You're probably wondering why three different products and when to use them. So let's talk about that a little bit. If you were to just turn the hem up, not pressing it with a template, not being particularly careful about the hem width, and not using one of these fusible products and fusing your hem in place, this is exactly what you would get. Isn't that just lovely? <laughs> so you can tell that these are much more even and flat even before we stitch it. There's not much difference in the way these look, except that the one with the knit stay tape does have a stitching line. The other two do not. So we have knit stay tape here. It's hard to tell which is in what here. They actually look and feel the same. But one of them has the spray glue, and one of them has the fusible web tape. If I were to approach a project, I would experiment on my fabric because every fabric is going to be different. And you don't want to get these peaks and stretched out hems, the stitching line that's just is puckered and not flat. So try it without anything at first, as I did with this. Decided I didn't want that. And then st straight stitch on all three of these different techniques and see which one looks the best. We know that the one with the knit stay tape is sort of the go-to, the one that's always going to work. But you might not want this extra line in here. Maybe it's a little bit too much product in the hem for something that's a thin fabric. So one of these other two is going to work just fine. I have to say that I have a preference for using the uh, fusible web tape. It's the easiest, the cleanest, the sheerest, and I just like using it. But if it's not successful, then I'll go to the knit stay tape. Now we need to decide what sort of stitch we want to put on these hems. So I have some choices here. You can stitch a straight line, as in these two samples. This is the one that has the surging. This is the one that has the straight edge. Interestingly enough, the one with the straight edge, even though it's a straight stitch, has a little more give than the one that has the surged edge. So that's something to consider as well. Before we had certain special equipment, sewers were used to using a double needle, which is what this one is. You have two lines of stitches, and then on the back side, you have a zigzag stitch. 
And again, this is on the raw edge. If I were doing a double needle, I would not also serge the edge because it's a lot of zigzag and thread on the wrong side of the fabric. But now, the home sewer can use the cover stitch. And a cover stitch is what is used in every ready-to-wear garment that you probably have ever purchased. If you have a serger, you can also purchase a feature on usually a high-end serger that will be a cover stitch. If you don't want to purchase that high-end serger, you can buy a dedicated serger-like piece of equipment. Looks just like a serger, but it only cover stitches. And that's actually what I've chosen to do because I don't want to have to go back and forth setting up my serger for one kind of stitch and then changing it for another kind of stitch. I like to keep it set up for a three th thread or a four thread serging. So this is the cover stitch. It looks the same, two rows of straight stitch. The back is a little bit different configuration. It is a zigzag, but there's a little heavier sort of uh, meandering stitch that goes along with it. When you look at ready-to-wear today, and especially the more expensive ready-to-wear, sometimes they will actually use this side, which is considered the wrong side, as the right side. But it's your choice. Right side, wrong side, right side, wrong side. The difference to me is the cover stitch, and particularly the wider set that it is, will have a tunnel, a raised portion to this. Cover stitches are always flat. The stretching is the most with the cover stitch. And you can see I'm getting a little bit of bubbling here, actually, on this double needle. That's a little trickier as well. But when I pull this, I can feel those stitches begin to kind of pop and change, but not on the cover stitch. Now, if you don't have a cover stitch machine or a feature, and you really are not interested in pursuing that, it's possible that you can uh, emulate that stitch with a utility stitch on your sewing machine. This looks more like the wrong side of a cover stitch than the right side, but you'll see this, and you'll even see it on really expensive ready-to-wear where they've used the raw edge and used the cover stitch or a utility stitch as pure decoration. The one thing I caution is when you are using this sort of utility stitch on the sewing machine through a single layer, then it will bubble it terrifically and stretch it out. So I always want to use some sort of paper stabilizer. This has remained in the stitching and it's too difficult to get out, but it will obviously wash out as you uh, launder the garment.